and we're talking about economic and technology trend for post COVID-19. The world is yours. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, so uh, thank you for inviting me and also it's glad to see some uh, old friends here. And uh, also, I think my name was mentioned by Denise already <laughs> for, for our initiative about the CTS ABC project. And also, I am glad to see Kai here. So, and uh, actually, early on, <coughs> I have been messaging with uh, communication with Kai actually via, via WeChat. Uh, and uh, we are talking about uh, we already get used to the lockdown life, right? So, it's very interesting because um, we have uh, actually more busy than before, have a lot of meetings. So that's why I think about um, if we consider post COVID-19. Uh, so people, more and more people get used to lockdown life and maybe think about a new style of living. So what would be the impact to the people, individual, and to the, uh, also to the economy and of course to the uh, technology. So I have a um, slide to share with you. Okay, so uh, first, um, let me, oops. Okay, so well, so uh, my name is Yushun. I'm from uh, Surrey Business School of University of Surrey. I'm also associate dean for international for the university, coordinating the three. Uh, we have three faculties, and uh, I'm uh, coordinating this international effort from the faculties, especially the work with uh, China. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, are. As a university, we also in, have a great impact, uh, got impacted by the COVID-19. So we have to think about uh, what to do next. Okay. So I'm also a co-chairman of the largest innovation center in London, which is in Vivo Pursuit Station, called Cocoon Global. So we have 7,000 square meters, six floors in the center of London. Uh, so we help uh, technology to be commercialized. We work with venture capitals, uh, incubators, accelerators. Yeah. Um, so if we look at the, um, uh, the economic feature, okay, so what the economic feature will look like after COVID-19. Yeah, so of course, we will see that the international trade cost will be uh, uh, increased. Okay, so the cost, as uh, we can say now, okay, so the, the logistics cost already increased, and uh, also there will be more uncertainties. Okay, so especially during this period, and after this, we don't know uh, when this will recover. It may take uh, maybe a few months or even to half an or one year. Okay, so there is more cost of international trade and the more uncertainties in international trade and the transportation. And the, uh, actually just uh, yesterday in our university work, we were talking about how we should arrange staff to travel internationally, okay? So, um, because more people now they adapt to the current uh, uh, work lifestyle and the work style, okay? It seems uh, to some of the people, it's uh, quite comfortable, right? So staying at home, doing more things, have more meetings, okay? So, um, and um, now because the country, they, many countries already suffer, suffer from the international collaboration because they cannot get the product they would expect to get from another country. The supply chain does not work well. And uh, so what they should do, such as the UK's medical sector, they claim they want to control the medical supply chain and uh, make it a domestic uh, supply chain rather than international supply chain because for some strategic uh, product so uh, they want less uncertainty to save people lives, people's lives right uh, so um, then i think uh, during the next few months and it's already happening so the the whole whole, whole world will think about how to make more control of its supply chain that's why us want the supply chain uh, to come back to the us they would like to the government would like to pay the cost but of course this is a painful process. Uh, so uh, how long would this process take? Nobody knows, okay? But uh, this is a trend. So, and uh, it's because that um, uh, there is less economic activities happen, uh, especially 
inter countries. So they have less rely on the other country. They have less mutual benefit among other country. And uh, this will lead to economic deglobalization. And uh, uh, people, they feel that uh, a disease like this can really detrimental, can be very, very detrimental to the current uh, structure of economy, current structure of a global supply chain. So this will lead to less weight of economies in future consideration because there's less reliable, less benefit when we work with another country. So this will create, uh, before, when we uh, want to create a trouble for another country, we also think about, okay, what the other country may bring to us economically, yeah. But now since the economic benefit is less, so a country have less concern when they one country want to have a conflict with another country. So there is less to compromise. Okay, so the world will become uh, less stable in the next period. And uh, so there will be uh, international, more and more international conflict in the next period as we could say. And uh, so this is what we have to face. And uh, opportunities, okay. So we will say that, uh, for example, UK and China. So um, like UK, originally the manufacturing industry is shrinking. However, because of this, UK want to get control of the lower uh, end of the value chain. Before, the, always a country always want to offshore the or, or outsource the lower end of the value chain of all the industries they want to do this in China, in India. But now, uh, so uh, this sort of industry will be encouraged and uh, such as manufacturing, okay. And in China, it's the same, okay. okay. So though it's uh, mainly for manufacturing, however, compared to many other industries in China, the, uh, they encourage that um, uh, the farmers or peasants, they originally they are encouraged them to go to cities. So I think now, um, there will be a trend that is to encourage more people to go to agriculture to pro to get give uh, enough supply to the nation because originally they can source uh, inter uh, internationally. So you will feel okay. Why China source agriculture for the internationally? Actually, China is one of the largest country actually uh, uh, export or import uh, food. Okay, so this is because that uh, agriculture create more, uh, create less profit margin. So that's why China would like to source many from other countries. But now because of this, uh, less rely on other countries. So there are more opportunities in China for agriculture. So the industry may shift to the uh, downside or to the lower end of the value chain. This is a trend. So, um, and the less competitive, this is also a good thing for some domestic company before they will have to compete with the international company, but now they will only compete domestically. So talk about this, we think about um, what would be the technology uh, trend, okay, to facilitate or accelerate the change of economy. So we will think that people, they will be more rely on technologies that can enable distant business. Okay, so it's better for people to have a business that have less contact, face-to-face -face contact. Okay, so what are the technologies? Actually, so this we are familiar with VR. Okay, so I'm glad uh, Kai already talked about the VR in education. Okay, so I'm also uh, uh, interested in the VR technologies that enable office work. Okay, so people, they wear a glass just like uh, when we watch the movie, uh, I think it's called uh, King's Arm, right? So the, the, um, the movie about a British spy, right? It's very famous. Uh, and uh, uh, they wear the glass and they can see the people in different uh, location. They are mapped into his vision, into this glass. You can see people actually sitting around you, okay? So now we can only see pictures, but later with the VR technology, we will see people, see you sitting in front of me, just like we watch the movie. That's um, uh, maybe 50 years ago, we, we or, or 40 years ago, the, the first uh, Star, Star Wars movie. Okay, so 
we can project uh, people, three D dimension project people in front of another uh, planet. Okay, so so and uh, and have a face to face meeting. Okay, so this is VR, and actually this technology, the prototype already exists in Surrey University. So uh, Surrey University have very very good VR and 5G because we have to rely on 5G also because we want to the image 3D image to be projected instantly so we need a very high speed transmission and the 5G become very critical in, in this we cannot rely on 4G in 4G even it's uh, not so smooth in zoom right sometimes I still when you hear me or I hear you and I still can hear the break of voice but the 5G there will be no uh, bricks and there will be less latency. People can instantly see each other, interact with each other, and more data, more information can be shared. So 5G will be uh, a next trend. This can enable distant business. And uh, of course, AI will be used to uh, reduce labor cost because once American or China and or UK, they call back the manufacturing business okay they want to they don't i think if they use a human to do the production if we produce the same product after us uh, get back the manufacturing from china to us uh, so the cost may rise four times so can you imagine that if you buy um coat clothes or buy food or buy any furnitures that four times like uh, for example a sofa like uh, 300 Grand in the UK now have to the same sofa has to be sold as a uh, uh, 1200 quid. I don't think uh, people will enjoy that. That's a reduce of uh, the social welfare. And uh, actually, labor uh, the, the labor cost is very important, and uh, AI can solve that. So this will be the trend. And of course, another technology we should look at is uh, 3D printing, and uh, this will. Uh, improve flexibility, enable a manufacturing base to produce more product, more flexibility, easy to config. Configuration will enable one facility to print um, hundreds of uh, product. Okay. So, and also for 3D printing, design become more important and uh, uh, more people focus on creativity, design. Once you design, you send it to the machine, the machine can print whatever you designed. So the intellectual property become important and uh, people are thinking if this becomes important people only uh, think and design product and uh, this may create some uh, uh, ip conflict okay so i think what we have discussed earlier in this panel or in previous keynote speakers talk about the blockchain so blockchain will closely work with 3d printing and other technology to enable that um, we can enter into a uh, more smart uh, world. Okay, so uh, basically, I think COVID nineteen it's a disaster. However, this indeed push the technology forward. Okay, so and the one thing become extremely popular, especially from early this year, especially after COVID nineteen or during after the break of uh, COVID nineteen. It's a live stream converse platforms. It's not so popular in the UK or EU. It still have something in Facebook, maybe you are not familiar, and I also have some of this sort of business in uh, uh, Twitter or, or uh, uh, there, uh, there, is there an, oh, Amazon, yes. Amazon already have this uh, similar model, but it's becoming a major commerce platform from e-commerce to social commerce, to live stream commerce. And this platform become very important. The president of China, the governors of province, and the city mayors, they all went to uh, social commerce and the live commerce platform this year. And they encourage this model because of technology, this platform empowered individuals to do business. For example, I can simply start to sell my mobile phones. I can sell my mouse and just open this platform. I introduce this mouse and then people start to uh, interact with me and they can watch my video and there's a button. It's like not like the conference button, 
but the, the buttons about whether you want to purchase this product, okay? There is a payment system integrated, there is a logistics system integrated, and the one man can open a company, can sell a, a whole a house of a product, okay? So this is a live stream commerce platform, and um, this is also my current research. And uh, any technology can empower individuals, reduce, reduce the dependency of a global supply chain will be encouraged as a technology trend. Okay. So since I only get uh, 15 minutes, so I think this is uh, my uh, brief uh, presentation about uh, uh, my view to the trend of economics and the technologies for the next period. Thank you.